Guys, just wanted to do a quick review of some news that broke last night. Rogers' massive telco acquisition of Shaw Communications won court approval uh, almost two years after the, the deal was announced. I want to give some background on this deal, um, some history on the telco space in Canada briefly, and then going into what this deal may mean for synergies on the new company if this ends up going through, um, and then also... Um, just from a stock perspective, Rogers and Shaw, what the reactions have been. Um, so I'll just preface this with saying there are still a couple avenues that this deal doesn't go through. The deal can get, or the court decision can get appealed, potentially overturned, um, and this can get strung out for longer, or ultimately the federal government could try vetoing the deal. We'll see how it goes. But this is obviously a huge step. I think general market consensus is this was... Um, the decision that was either going to make the deal go forward um, or not. So people think that this is kind of the last straw and, and Rogers will finally get to acquire uh, Shaw uh, Communications. So just some background on the telco space in Canada. There are four major telcos in Canada, Talus, Rogers, Bell, Shaw. Um, Quebecor is a telco that just plays primarily in Quebec. They've been trying to become more national with limited success. It's very hard. It's a very developed market. Um, licenses and infrastructures are already built out. So it's really hard to grow um, and, and to steal from each other, essentially, to, to build out a national business at this point. And that's why Rogers really wanted this deal to get a lot more scale on their capital investments as they roll out 5G um, and stuff like that. This has also been one of the most contentious sectors of the Canadian economy from an acquisition and, and an anti-competitive point of view. Um, Canadians pay some of the highest wireless rates in the world. Um, I believe this is primarily just because of the landscape of the country uh, and how large the country is. A lot of rural areas outside of the main cities that we need to obviously get teleco services to, um, but it's not overly profitable to be reaching some of these areas of the country, and that just weighs down total margins and, and requires prices to, to be at a higher rate. I don't think uh, Canadian telcos have necessarily higher profit margins or anything than other countries in the world. I believe, and I'm not sure, uh, it's just primarily like the, the landscape uh, of, of the geography of Canada and, and the cost of the wireless uh, licenses here um, that are the reason that consumers tend to be paying more. But because of this, in the public eye, as well as with, um, you know, the government, this has always been a very contentious space um, to operate in and, and take pricing and, and stuff like that. Um, Bell, which is the largest telco in Canada, actually has been looking at buying Shaw for a while. Um, but every time they look into it, they ultimately um, don't proceed because they had high levels of concern that this acquisition would, that acquisition would not go through. So Rogers went into this fully knowing that there was a good chance they, they may not be able to close on this deal, um, but still made a huge investment. I think Rogers' market cap is about 30 to 35 billion. So they're pretty much you know, diluting 40% of their company in order to take in Shaw. Um, Shaw is a much bigger business on the west end of the country, I believe, Alberta, BC, um, th those western provinces, whereas Rogers is massive in, in Ontario. Um, but I believe they also have a national footprint. It's just the bulk of their businesses is more central Canada. Um in terms of what was at stake in the, like what was being argued in this court proceeding, essentially in order for this deal to go through, it was said that Rogers would definitely have to sell off Shaw's wireless assets because Rogers is currently already the market leader in like wireless services for Canada. Um, so Shaw's um, asset, which is branded as Freedom Mobile here in Canada, um, would definitely not be able to stay as part of the transaction. They reached a side deal with Quebecor, uh, the Quebec, primarily Quebec only um, teleco provider. They've been trying to dabble in the rest of Canada with limited success um, for, I believe, $3 billion, give or take, uh, for the wireless assets that are out west. 
um, and also flow into Ontario and other provinces, but primarily out west. Um, and the argument in this case was essentially um, if by divesting wireless mobile to Quebec or if Quebec or would be a strong enough fourth competitor to make the competitiveness of the market at least um, equivalent to what it is today. And ultimately, the decision was, um, I'm just trying to get some of the, the verbiage here, um, but they do not believe that the merger and divestiture are to produce materially higher prices relative to what would have prevailed in the absence of this deal. Um, and it goes on and on and on. But essentially, that's that's what it is. That's what was being discussed. And eventually, they sided with Rogers that if they are to divest through the mobile and Quebec or is to take it over, um, what's the difference between that and the current deal in terms of the wireless market uh, in isolation? And the decision uh, or the consensus ended up being um, it's not going to be materially different. And that's why this essentially got approved. So what does this mean for the business? What's the opportunity here? Um, 5G rollout is extremely capital, capitally intensive, huge capex needed to get that across the country of Canada um, and has relatively low return on investment um, just based off of uh, you know, how much higher prices are allowed to go in Canada. I know there's some, I think there's some caps and stuff that the government's talking, um, as well as the fact that the pie split between these four players. So no one can really achieve huge amounts of, of scale by, you know, swallowing up all of Shaw's cable assets, internet assets, um, media assets. They can help improve return on uh, investments by just delivering a lot more synergies on the back end. So they call out network and IT synergies, procurement, distribution and marketing, SGNA. All of this makes a ton of sense. They're going to unfortunately likely cut a ton of jobs, um, but that's going to end up being um, a huge element of the ROI of this deal. The other part is the capital efficiencies. So spend on network infrastructure. They don't need, you know, two sets of satellites that are um, providing uh, different areas of the country um, with services, m multiple licenses, stuff like that. It, it, it all gets synergized into one company. Uh, fiber build out. Um, not sure how much that'll apply uh, now that, you know, freedom's not part of this transaction and this IT and back office. So there's lots of things on the back end in terms of the like commercial side of things, bundling opportunities. I think their media divisions, Rogers has a much bigger media division, um, but their media divisions kind of intersect with each other. Um, so being able to drive synergies there um, could, could add value on the cable side. Um, reducing churn, coast to coast uh, networking, because uh, as I said, Shaw is a lot bigger out West. Rogers has a presence everywhere, but is a very big in central Canada, I believe. Um, so this just, adds a lot of scale, much needed scale in the midst of um, huge 5G investments that um, all of these players are gonna have to take on. Um, in terms of, uh, I guess if you're an investor in Rogers today, um, one thing just to call out, I believe this deal will be like heavily dilutive to your stake in the company, um, obviously, but you're getting a lot of assets back, a lot of potential scale. Um, the one thing is some people own Rogers because of their media assets. So they own the Toronto Blue Jays. They own 40% of Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, which owns uh, sports teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, Toronto Raptors, Toronto Football Club. Um, so I think it's not a big part of their business today. I think it's probably about one sixth of the company. Um, so you really shouldn't be investing in Rogers today just to own a piece of the Jays because it's, it's so much other noise and, and elements of the business. But that one sixth of the company is going to turn more into like one tenth of the company after this transaction. So you really shouldn't be investing in Rogers specifically for their ownership of the Jays or something else. If you were in the first place, you, you should maybe reconsider the investment or make sure you're comfortable with uh, the wireless side of their business, the cable side of their business, which is about to get bigger. 
um, and, and stuff like that. That's the only watch out, I'd say. Um, the stock reaction, unsurprisingly, has been uh, positive, uh, up 6% on the news. I'm sure Shaw, yep, Shaw's up 10%, give or take. I believe the deal price is 40.50. So this is essentially saying um, people are very confident this deal is going to go through um, just about 4% being left on the table here. But you can kind of see over the last six months, the stock trading um, significantly below the deal price can kind of speak to, to um, some of the doubts people had about this deal going through. So I'd say overall, from a shareholder perspective, um, obviously good for Shaw. Um, also uh, good for Rogers, as long as you were holding the business because of their telco assets and not necessarily primarily due to their media assets, which you shouldn't have been doing in the first place. Um, so overall, good for the, the stocks. Uh, in terms of for consumers, I'm not, I'm not close enough to, to fully say if the consumer would have been better off with Quebec or acquiring freedom and scaling it, or if Shaw being able to um, operate as is would have been better for the consumer. Um, I do know like Shaw didn't even bid on any 5G licenses, I don't believe, because Rogers bid on all of them instead. So they've kind of positioned how their actions over the last two years to almost force the hand of the tribunal and, and of the courts to put this deal through because they weren't positioning Shaw great to succeed uh, from a wireless perspective in a world that didn't include this acquisition. So I don't know how I feel about it from a consumer side, from a stock side, I'd say it's a, it's a win-win for both sets of shareholders. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this one plays out, but definitely uh, huge news coming out of, out of Canada this morning. Um, please let me know if, if you have any thoughts on this as an investor, as a consumer of, of telco providers in Canada, would love to hear your point of view in the comments. Um, if you like this type of co content, uh, please consider subscribing liking uh, the video really helps me out just getting started out here on YouTube. Um, so I'd really love to kind of grow the community and, and grow the channel. Thank you guys for listening. Bye.